absolute worst case scenario driving okay, in this edition. See there. That's because we're driving in a whiteout on Highway 118. Terrifying moments as cold winds blowing over a warm lake can produce some of the most dramatic, dangerous, and efficient snowstorms on the planet. Lake effect snow squalls can stop and shutter entire communities, bringing uh, snowfall rates 5 to 10, even 15 centimeters an hour. Our Mark Robinson is in the middle of one to tell us more about this dramatic snow phenomenon. Mark, uh, really known in the shoulder seasons as well, <laughs> when those lakes are warm, not only in Ontario, but in Manitoba and sea effect snow in Atlantic Canada as well. Yeah, all you really need is a 13 degree difference between the, the temperature of the surface of the water on that water body and about a kilometer and a half up in the atmosphere. Us meteorologists call that the 850 millibar uh, level. And if there's a 13 degree difference between that, got the winds coming and all the winds are oriented correctly and you will get snow squalls and in some areas of Ontario uh, you can as you said you can bury whole communities in just a couple of hours. These ingredients don't sound that different than summertime thunderstorm convection, <laughs> temperature difference, fetch, topography. These are all some of the ingredients that go into lake effect snow. Tell us more about what has to come together. Well, yeah, you know what? That convection, when you said convection, you are absolutely correct. You're getting a very rapid upwards motion of, uh, of that uh, relatively warm, moist air as it comes on shore. As it comes up, it, the land pushes it up just a little bit, and that's just enough to get that, you know, get those, those parcels of air going up. And sometimes, if you get a vigorous enough convection, you can get lightning. You can actually get thunderstorms, thunder snow in these squalls, and that's actually relatively common I've actually seen it myself more than once and it is quite spectacular to be standing in the middle of a snowstorm and suddenly you're hearing the loud booms of thunder. As Mark is standing there telling us about lake effect snow squalls the snow is piling up on his jacket and on his hat he is in the middle of a <laughs> strong band of lake effect snow and fetch has a big part to do with this. What's the difference between long and short fetch when it comes to wind direction and piling up this efficient snow base? Well, you want the, the air to be able to go across as much of that water as it can because that's going to be picking up that moisture uh, and essentially getting that moisture up into the uh, relatively drier air. And then once it makes it back onto shore, of course, uh, if you've got more moisture, you're talking about uh, more snow. So you can get snow squalls with short fetch, which is, you know, the distance from shore to shore. Uh, but it's really when you get those long, long areas of of open water that you will get uh, the really, really efficient snow squalls. Now, here's the one other thing. Once you start to get ice on the lake, uh, the lake effect machines begin to slow down. So we often see uh, the biggest lake effect events in uh, the, either the late fall or early winter when the lakes are still relatively warm and we can get those cold outbreaks of air over top of, uh, of that water. Size, depth, and location of the Great Lakes makes a huge difference in the type of lake effect snow squalls. But either way, driving in lake effect snow is not any pretty business. We're talking about drives that can change in a matter of kilometers from bright blue skies to whiteout conditions.